Hello and welcome. I'm Alex, your virtual guide on this tour through time here at the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum in McMinnville, Oregon. Once you step inside the aviation building, you are greeted by the awe-inspiring sight of the gargantuan H-4 Hercules, the largest flying boat ever built. Accompanying this video is my own mini-documentary about this massive aircraft, but I will attempt to summarize it to help you understand the rest of this tour. The Hercules was built by the famous pilot, movie producer, and business magnate Howard Hughes. He was contracted to build a flying boat so large that it could help transport troops and supplies to Europe during World War II. Due to the limited materials he was allowed to build with, the aircraft had to be made almost entirely out of birch wood, making this airship seem like an impossibility. The press had sneered at Hughes's plane, nicknaming it the Spruce Goose, and by the time the aircraft was completed, the war was over, and there was no need for it anymore. The government and the public thought that Hughes had wasted public funding on an aircraft that was simply too big to fly. But on November 2nd, 1947, Hughes had shocked the nation when he unveiled the H-4 Hercules and took it out for taxiing tests in the harbor of Long Beach, California. On the third and final run, he ordered flaps to 15 degrees and flew the plane at an altitude of 70 feet for almost a mile before gently setting her back down into the water. The Hercules had broke records that day. She was three times bigger than the largest aircraft in the skies at that point, and it held the record for the largest wingspan of any aircraft ever built for a total of 72 years, until the Strato launch broke that record in the year 2019. When you peer around the museum, the other massive aircraft surrounding the Hercules appear like toys in comparison. The tail flaps alone have a wingspan larger than the Boeing DC-3 which sits nearby. The H-4 was driven by eight Pratt & Whitney R4360 engines, the largest radial reciprocating aircraft engines ever built, each one capable of 3,000 horsepower for a combined total of 24,000 horsepower of propulsion. The propellers themselves have a diameter of 17 feet, which is a little over 5 meters. The wingspan of the Hercules is 320 feet, 97 and a half meters. Her length is 218 feet, 66 and a half meters. And the tip of her tail soars over five stories in the air. Her main construction was a seven-layer laminated birch veneer it was quite a thin material, but also unusually strong. The veneer was used not just in the cladding of the shell, but also layered up to make the structural frames of the plane itself. Over the shell went a layer of canvas that was painted with a metallic aluminum color. The H-4 is designated a historical engineering landmark by the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. As she sits in the museum, all the weight of the craft is supported by a steel cradle under the original wood-framed belly of the beast. Now, let's go inside through the side doors to get a better view of this amazing airship. We're looking at the structural frames stretching all the way back into the tail of the aircraft. Those beach balls you see on the floor were discovered inside the floaters of the wings. They were placed there in 1951 as a backup measure in case the floaters were ever breached by water. Above is the massive wooden framework brace that supports all the weight of the wings as they are cantilevered off each other. Below are the watertight compartments that hold the 11 fuel tanks, each with a capacity of 1,000 gallons of fuel. Looking towards the nose of the plane, we see the electrical box in the foreground, and ahead of it is the hydraulic assist pump. The Hercules was so large it had to be the first airplane ever constructed to use a hydraulic steering system, 
capable of multiplying the pilot's strength by 200 times. Hydraulic steering is now commonplace on large aircraft. The H-4 was designed to carry either 750 troops or two Sherman tanks, or at least the equivalent of 150,000 pounds of supplies, to which they would have been loaded through the clamshell doors on the front of the nose. But since the airplane was no longer needed, the clamshell doors were never installed, although they were constructed. The aircraft was so well built that the doors and hatches could easily be opened and closed no matter what the temperature or humidity is in the room. Keep in mind, the Hercules is made almost 98% out of wood, a material known for expanding and contracting quite noticeably. These stairs were made just for Howard Hughes. He was quite germaphobic and didn't like touching the ladders that the crew was using. You smell the old. <laughs> it's a tight squeeze, but as we make our way up to the second level, we are spiraling over a massive air purifier, but we'll discuss that in a little bit. Now we find ourselves in the large second level of the Hercules. This is where crew had access to the wings. The H-4 is so large that you can actually stand up inside the wings. This was useful to the crew who kept an eye on the maintenance of the eight engines. These are the seats where the journalists sat when history was made as the largest aircraft ever built to that point had leapt out of the harbor. The windows you see here were added during the years when the Spruce Goose was on display inside the dome next to RMS Queen Mary. They are not original. Howard loved drinking coffee, and as such, he had this dispensing station installed. Now we can see some of the flight testing instruments, which helped provide data on the performance of the airplane. And now we've come to the highlight of our tour, the actual cockpit of the Hercules. To the right is the flight engineer's station. Howard sat in the pilot seat on the left. But the seat on the right is not exactly a co-pilot station. Actually, it was designed for the crewman who assists with the hydraulic function of the plane. But there were a few instruments installed for emergency piloting. Although you can't hear it in the video, as you walk throughout the plane, the floors creak under your weight. It's quite an odd sound that you don't expect to hear inside an airplane, especially not one of this size. The pipe that juts out the back of Howard's seat is where the purified air blows out. Remember, I said that Howard was germaphobic. This was linked to his obsessive compulsive disorder. He insisted that when he was in the pilot's seat, the purified air always be blowing on him. The H-4 Hercules is a marvel of engineering. From its advanced CO2 fire suppression system, to its miles of electric cables and birchwood veneer framework, to its eight massive engines perched high overhead. The Spruce Goose is a titan, and it sits here, carefully restored and well-maintained at the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum of McMinnville, Oregon. If you're ever in the area, the museum is well worth the visit, especially to see this monster of an airplane. Thanks for watching. And be sure to check in the description below for a link to my mini documentary about the history of Howard Hughes's flying boat, the H-4 Hercules. Thank you for watching everyone. 
If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and comment below. For more stories on the architecture, engineering, and history of the Steam Age, make sure to subscribe. You can support me by either becoming a Patreon member or channel member, or you can help donate to my transatlantic voyage to the UK. Links and information are in the description below. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.